Hello students, how are you all today? This is Ashar Khan, your geography teacher from Shiv Jyoti Educational Group Kota and I hope you are all well and fine at your homes. Students, today we are going to start a new chapter of geography that is chapter number 15, Life on the Earth. So please open your book on page number 123. So students, on page number 123, let us start the chapter that is chapter number 15, Life on the Earth. So students, up until now we have learned about the different spheres of earth right that is lithosphere hydrosphere and atmosphere of our earth that is lithosphere the land part hydrosphere the water part and we learnt about atmosphere that is the air so the last two chapters of our book revolves around the biosphere what is biosphere where lithosphere hydrosphere and atmosphere meets biosphere takes place biosphere is the sphere of life okay so in this chapter we are learning about life on the earth so let us start reading keep your pencils ready because we will be underlining a lot of important stuff so by now you might have realized that all units of this book have acquainted you with the three major realms of the environment as i've just told you the three major realms of the environment that is lithosphere hydrosphere and atmosphere right that is the lithosphere, the atmosphere and the hydrosphere. You know that living organisms of the earth constituting the biosphere interact with other environmental realms. And we also know that living beings also exist on the earth in the biosphere which is the sphere of life. Underline this here. The biosphere includes all the living components of the earth. It consists of all plants and animals including all the microorganisms that live on the planet earth and their interaction with the surrounding environment. So what did we understand? That biosphere consists of all the living things whether plant, animal or microorganism that live on our planet earth. Okay. <coughs> There's a paragraph given here in a box. Let us read that as well. Life on the earth is found almost everywhere. Living organisms are found from the poles to the equator, from the bottom of the sea to several kilometers in the air, from freezing water to dry valleys, from under the sea to underground water, lying below the earth's surface. That means everywhere that you will go on earth, you will find life, whether in plant or animal or both. Now, moving on. <clears throat> Most of the organisms exist on the lithosphere and or the hydrosphere as well as in the atmosphere. You see most of the organism either they exist in the lithosphere or hydrosphere and some animals or birds can travel in the atmosphere as well but they don't live there. Okay. There are also many organisms that move freely from one realm to another. There are many organisms that can go from land to air, uh, water and to air. Right. There are uh, uh, organism like a crocodile it can live both on land and water okay birds they can live on land as well as they can fly in the air if we talk about a particular uh, animal duck it can walk swim and fly now the biosphere and its components are very significant elements of the environment so biosphere and its element that is the land water and air they are very important to us how these elements interact with other components of the natural landscape such as land, water and soil. Now apart from these, we also have land, water and soil. They are also influenced by the atmospheric elements such as the temperature, rainfall, moisture and sunlight. Now the, it is saying that the living beings who live on the planet earth are influenced by the atmospheric elements like how much temperature is there, rainfall, moisture in the air and the sunlight that we are getting. The interaction of biosphere with land, air and water are important to the growth development and evolution of the organism. So that means there must be a balance between the land, water and air part to make life as well as the abiotic component that is temperature, rainfall, moisture and so on. That there must be a balance between the living and the non-living. Okay. Now let us move on to our next topic that is ecology and how it defines our ecosystem. Now, let us move on to our next topic that is ecology. Now, you have been reading about ecological and environmental problems in newspaper and magazine. Have you ever thought what ecology is? Okay, so right from here, underline, the environment you know is made up of abiotic and biotic components. Abiotic components are non-living components and biotic are living. It would be interesting to understand how the diversity of life form is maintained to bring a kind of balance. 
The, this balance is maintained in a particular proportion so that a healthy interaction between the biotic and the abiotic component goes on. So you see in nature we have a very delicate balance between the biotic component that is living things and the abiotic components which are the non-living things. Okay. So now the question comes what is ecology? First let us underline the definition. The interaction of a particular group of organism within abiotic factors within a particular habitat resulting in clearly defined energy flows and material cycles on land, water and air are called ecological systems. Okay? The term ecology as a word is derived from two Greek words. Okay? The term ecology is derived from Greek language oikos which means house or household and logi which means the study of. Okay? So ecology means the study of houses. Here the word house is loose. House so because here it means uh, plants and forest and where animals live. So it is basically talking about the house or the household of animals. So what is ecology? It is a study of plant and animal habitats. Okay, it is also written in a book in a uh, paragraph here. The term ecology is derived from the Greek with word oikos meaning house combined with the word logi which means the science or the study of. Literally ecology is the study of the earth as a household of plants, human beings, animals and microorganism which was given by Ernst Haeckel who was a German zoologist. Okay. Now let us move on to our next topic. See here both the abiotic components and biotic components they are living must have a delicate balance between them so that they can survive and live together in an ecosystem. Tell me what happens if suddenly there is a strong burst of sunlight. Will it affect the living things or not? Yes it will, the plants will die, the animals will suffer. So there must be a balance between the abiotic, the non-living components and the biotic components about the living things. Now ecosystem, so you see what is an ecosystem? A system consisting of biotic and abiotic components is known as ecosystem. A kesa system jis mein living or non-living components saath mein balance mein exist karte ho. That is called an ecosystem. Moving on to habitat or ecological system. First underline the meaning of habitat. A habitat is the ecological sense, the totality of the physical and chemical factors that constitute the general environment. In loose terms we can say that habitat is more like a place where animals and plants live together. A system consisting of biotic and abiotic components is known as ecosystem. Okay? A system consisting of biotic factors as well as biotic factors is called an ecosystem. All these components in ecosystem are interrelated and interact with each other. Different types of ecosystems exist with varying ranges of environmental conditions where various plants and animal species have got adapted through evolution and this phenomena is known as ecological adaptation. Okay, so what happens because of the various factors on our earth, various sunlight, uh, moisture and rainfall which are found uh, at different places, what has happened? The plants and animals have changed, have evolved okay, to better suit their environmental needs. Now we have the next topic here that is types of ecosystem. Now our next topic is types of ecosystem. So up until now we have discovered what an ecosystem is. It is a place where animals and plants exist together with the balance of the abiotic factors, the non-living things, right? Now we are learning about different types of ecosystem. Broadly we classify the ecosystems of earth into two parts that is the terrestrial and aquatic. Now what is the difference? It is a very simple thing to learn. Terrestrial means land, aquatic means water. So basically we will find plants and animals in two, uh, two spheres of uh, earth that is the land part and the water part. Okay? Now they are further classified by, into biomes and marine and fresh water. Okay? Now let us discuss them one by one. Let, but first let us study what the word biome mean. A biome is a plant and animal community that covers a large geographical area. What is a biome? It is a large geographical area where plant and animal community meet. The boundaries of different biomes on land are determined mainly by climate. Therefore, a biome can be defined as the total assemblage of plant and animal species interacting within special condition. Underline this that what is a biome? A biome can be defined as the total assemblage or collection of plant and animal species which interact within specific condition. Now see there are different types of biomes on our earth. We will study about those in a minute. Now 
there are different condition which affect the fact, uh, which affect the climate of biome such as rainfall temperature humidity and soil conditions some of the major biomes of the world are forest grassland desert and tundra biomes now aquatic systems can be classified as marine and freshwater biomes marine ecosystem includes the oceans estuaries and coral reef in marine system means the water will be salty so we can talk about oceans or estuaries and coral reefs but freshwater system include lakes ponds streams marshes and bogs now that is for our types of ecosystem about that we'll be uh, studying in detail in a minute but first let us study about the structure and functions of ecosystem how an ecosystem is made up of and how it functions okay the structure of an ecosystem involves the description of the available plant and animal species from a structural point of view all ecosystem consists of abiotic and biotic factors that all ecosystem will have abiotic factors those are temperature okay moisture land and soil and biotic factors as you all know biotic factors include animals or plants which have life okay include all the green plants which manufacture their own food through photosynthesis as well as animals that are the consumers that are divided into three parts primary secondary and tertiary we will be covering these in a minute as well so you see abiotic factors include rainfall temperature sunlight atmospheric humidity soil condition inorganic substances such as carbon dioxide water nitrogen calcium and phosphorus and potassium but biotic factor that means the living things include the producers the consumers that is primary secondary and tertiary consumers and the decomposers now what are they we all know that producers are the plants okay producers are those plants which can make their own food by the use of sunlight water and soil nutrients now let us discuss about consumer which are the animals okay so uh, we have divided consumers into three categories that is the primary consumer secondary consumers and tertiary consumers let us learn about them now the primary consumers include herbivore animals like deer goats mice and all plant eating animal in primary consumer you will have those animals which are herbivore that means these are the animals which eat only grass okay now the secondary consumers the carnivores which include all the flesh eating animals like snakes tiger and lions now these are the secondary consumer which are the carnivorous animals carnivorous animals are those animals which eat only meat that means the secondary consumers what do they eat they don't eat producers but instead they feast upon the primary consumers like goat cattle and other animal which eat plants okay now there are certain carnivores that also feed on carnivores and are known as top carnivores that is the tertiary consumers now kuch carnivores aise hote hain jo secondary consumers ko khate hain okay they eat the secondary consumers these are mongoose hawks and owls okay now comes the decomposers that is the third part of the biotic factors okay after plants we have consumers consumers are divided into three parts primary secondary and tertiary primary are those who eat only plants secondary eat uh, primary consumer and tertiary can eat either plants as well as animals okay they are omnivores but the last one in the biotic factor are the decomposers what are decomposers decomposers are those that feed on dead organisms now decomposers they don't prey instead they feed on dead organism organism which are already dead they are also divided into two parts scavengers like vultures and crows okay vultures and other uh, birds like it they feast on the dead carcass of an animal and apart from that we also have microorganisms okay microorganisms like bacteria which further break down the dead matter by other decomposing agents like bacteria and various microorganism so what we have learned so far the ecosystem there are mainly three types of biotic factors first one are the producers which produce food they uh, those are the plants second one are the consumers that means the animals which are divided into primary secondary and tertiary and the last one are the decomposers now let us see how the how an ecosystem functions okay in this paragraph we'll be learning about food chain now the producers are consumed by the primary consumer whereas the primary consumers are in turn being eaten by the secondary consumer so if we take the example of a plant here okay a plant is a part of the producers okay that means it is growing by the use of water air soil and sunlight correct now the plant will be eaten by a herbivore animal 
that will be the primary consumer correct further the secondary consumers are consumed by the tertiary consumer now the primary consumer can be eaten by any secondary consumer that is a snake okay and now the secondary carnivores the secondary consumers can be eaten by the tertiary consumers which are the uh, birds like hawk now after what uh, after this what happens when the tertiary consumer has eaten the secondary consumer what happens this particular uh, organism or animal first of all will die on its own after a period of time either some other one will hunt on it or it will die on its own after this particular animal is dead what will happen the decomposers which are the bacteria and microorganism will further break down its body okay and they will give the nutrients back to soil okay and this cycle keeps on going <clears throat> the decomposers feed on the dead at each and every level they change them into various substances such as nutrients organic and inorganic cells salts essential for soil fertility organisms of an ecosystem are linked together through a food chain all the organisms are linked they are connected by the food chain okay see here for example a plant eating beetle feeding on a paddy stalk is eaten by a frog which is in turn eaten by a snake which is then consumed by a hawk this sequence underline this this sequence of eating and being eaten and the resultant transfer of energy from one level to another is known as the food chain okay we have been learning this from class 5th uh, as well right what is a food chain so there is a one particular thing which is added in this definition if you will note resultant transfer of energy from one level to another what does this phrase means okay you see when herbivore feast on the producer it will convert some of its part into an energy okay now when the primary carnivore is uh, eating this bird eating this butterfly that energy will be gone to this frog same the energy transfer will going back to all of them until it is gone back into the decomposer and through decomposer it goes back down to the soil and other nutrients <clears throat> now however food chains are not isolated from one another now here is an example of a food chain in which we have just told this now see it is not only frog which can eat butterfly there are n number of animals which can hunt upon a butterfly okay not only snake will be able to eat a frog there are other animals which can eat frogs okay so food chains are not isolated from one another for example a mouse feeding on grain may be eaten by different secondary consumer or carnivore and these carnivores may be eaten by other different tertiary consumer so it's not necessary that one part of animal which with uh, it will only be eaten by another animal so you see in such situation each of the carnivore may consume more than one type of prey as a result the food chains get interlocked with one another all the food chains are connected through one another the birds can be eaten by either a fox or an owl the insects can be eaten by either a skunk bird or a possum and the bird can be eaten by an owl and the owl which will be eaten by a bear or a cougar or n number of animals which are present in the ecosystem okay so food chains are not fixed that is why this interconnecting network of species is known as food web now another term we are learning that this interconnection of species on each other it is called the food web underline this now generally we have two types of food chains which we recognize that is the grazing food chain and the detritus food chain okay we have two types of food chain grazing and detritus what they are let us learn in a grazing food chain the first level start with the plants as producers and end with carnivores as consumers at the last level while the herbivores being at the intermediate level so you see the first level the grazing food chain it starts with the producer and end with the carnivores and herbivores are at the intermediate middle level but detritus food chain is different because it starts on the energy which is captured by the autotrophs autotrophs are the producers which is a scientific name for plants or organisms which produce their own food are called autotrophs okay so in a detritus food chain it is based on autotrophous energy captured initiated by grazing animal and involves the decomposition of breaking down of organic waste and dead matter derived from the grazing food chain so basically grazing food chain is starting with the plants okay but detritus food chain is starting with the energy and it ends with the decomposer okay decomposition at the end so there is a difference between from where we are learning about grazing food chain grazing food chain kahan se start ho rahi hai from the plants and it's ending at the top carnivore level very simple to understand 
बट डिट्राइटस फूड चेन कहाँ से स्टार्ट हो रही है फ्रॉम द एनर्जी विच द प्लांट कैप्चर फ्रॉम द सनलाइट वाटर एंड अदर सॉइल न्यूट्रिय और वो खत्म कहाँ पे हो रही है डिकम्पोजर्स पे यानी सॉइल न्यूट्रिय से स्टार्ट हुआ और सॉइल न्यूट्रिय पे खत्म हुआ डिट्राइटस फूड चेन ओके नाउ लेट एस मूव ऑन टू अवर लास्ट टॉपिक ऑफ दिस वीडियो दैट इज टाइप्स ऑफ बायोम्स so in the earlier paragraphs you have learned the meaning of the term biome i made you underline the uh, term biome in paragraph types of ecosystem okay what is a biome a biome is a plant and animal community that covers a large geographical area that means a different parts of a land where plants and animals are found so obviously we know that there are different plants and animal which are found on the earth correct so it depends where they are living if they are near the equator near the poles in a tropical region desert region and so on Now let us try to identify the major biomes of the world. So we are going to be learning about major biomes of the world. Okay. So in our book we are learning about the five major biomes. Okay. That is the forest. We are going to be learning about the five major biomes. That is the forest biome, desert biome, grassland biome, aquatic biome. That means uh, animal and plant life in water, and the altitudinal biome. so come to page number 126 because there is a table given here we will be studying this paragraph this topic from this table so first we are learning about the forest biome okay we are learning about forest uh, in this table as you can see on page number 126 students that there is a table given here we will be learning about different types of climate flora and fauna regions about which are found in the forest biome so let us begin so as you can see here in your book that the forest biome is classified into four types that is the tropical equatorial deciduous temperate and boreal these are the different types of forest found on the earth as you can see the rain forests are pictured in red now here are the rain forests which are present on different part of the earth okay the temperature is given here that in the rain forest that is the tropical rain forest you will find the uh, an average temperature of 10 degree okay then climatic characteristics the temperature will be 20 to 25 degree celsius that will, that will be evenly distributed now the soil in forest it will be acidic poor in nutrients okay it will be fertile and enriched with decaying litter and acidic and poor in nutrients and will have a thin soil cover now different types of plants and animals are found in forest correct let's first talk about the plants or trees multi layered canopy tall and large trees in tropical rain forest you will find trees which have multi layered and are very tall okay in deciduous forest you will find less dense trees of medium height many varieties to exist okay you will find insects birds and mammal which are common species in both in deciduous forest okay then we come to temperate forest moderately dense broad leaf trees you will find in deciduous forest okay example being oak beech and maple common species of animals which are found in deciduous forest are squirrels rabbits skunks birds black bears and mountain lion okay so this was the forest biome now let us talk about the desert biome okay desert is or we all know that it is hot and dry deserts are also semi arid we also have coastal desert as well as cold desert example of hot and dry desert is sahara kalahari marusthali and rubel khali desert okay semi arid desert are found in marginal areas of hot desert okay then coastal desert these are the deserts which are found near coastal areas that is the atacama and the cold desert cold deserts are those area where it is relatively cold for example the tundra climatic regions okay the temperature in the hot and dry desert will vary from 20 to 45 degree celsius while in the cold desert it will be very less that is from 2 degree to 25 degree celsius now deserts whether they are hot or cold will have sorry they are rich in nutrients with little or no organic matter that means in the desert soil there are no or little organic matter present okay scanty vegetation vegetation is very low there few mammals are found insects reptiles and birds are found in plenty okay we can see rabbits rats antelopes and ground squirrels means basically in desert you will find animals which live under the ground now moving on to the grasslands now the grassland biome now these are the biome with plain stretch of land where grass is grown okay grassland are divided into two types that is the tropical savanna and temperate steppe here you can see the tropical savanna are given in green areas 
and temperate steppe in uh, yellow areas. These are the large areas of Africa, Australia, South America and India and parts of Eurasia and North America. Warm hot climate is prominent here. Here on the grassland side you will find warm hot climate. So, in grassland the temperature will be warm and hot, okay. Rainfall is uh, about 500 to 1250 millimeter. There will be hot summer and cold winter observed in the grassland. Grassland soil is porous with thin layer of humus that means dead organic matter is found there. There is thin flocculated soil which is rich in base. Now, grass as it is evident from the name, in grassland grasses are grown, trees and large shrubs are absent, okay. You will find giraffe, zebras, buffaloes, leopards, hyenas, elephants, mice, moles, snakes and worms, these are the common animals which you will found on the grasslands. As well as occasional trees such as cottonwoods, oaks and willows are also found. Now let us move on to our next biome that is the aquatic biome. Aquatic biome means life which is present in the water. Now as we already know that the aquatic biome is divided into two types that is fresh water and marine. Fresh water is the water from lakes, ponds and rivers while the marine water is from ocean, coral reefs, lagoons and estuaries. Okay? Now in both fresh water and marine temperatures vary widely with cooler air temperature and high humidity. Okay? So the temperature will vary near a aquatic region. Warm sw water swamps and marshes are found and water tidal swamps and marshes are found in the aquatic region. Now if we talk about the animals and plant life which are found in the aquatic biome, you will see that there is algae and other aquatic and marine plant communities with varieties of water dwelling animals. You will find a lot of fish as well as other creatures which are found in the aquatic biome. And last we move on to the altitudinal biome. Okay? Altitudinal biome as it is evident from the name, altitudinal means height, okay. In this type of biome we will be talking about mountains. Now here are the mountains. In altitudinal biome, slopes of high mountain ranges like the Himalayas, the Andes and the Rockies are prominent. Temperature and precipitation depends upon the latitudinal zone. You see temperature and rainfall will depend on the latitude, okay. That means the different height. At the base of the mountain you will find some greenery but as you will go up the greenery will diminish and it will be replaced by ice and snow at the peak. So it depends upon the height of the mountain if we are talking about altitudinal biome. Okay? Now let us talk about the flora and fauna that is the deciduous to tundra vegetation varying according to altitude. So different types of animals and plants are also found here. So student this was it for this part of the chapter. We will be covering the rest of the topics of chapter 15 in our next video. Until then make sure to revise everything that we have learnt in this uh, part and take care.